Okay, let's take a look at our kidney model. Okay, the plaque that has three different sections on it. On the right-hand side of this model, you have what's referred to as the renal corpuscle. Okay, the renal corpuscle is made up of the uh, glomerulus, which the glomerulus is what you find on the inside of this corpuscle, and then surrounding the glomerulus, which is a capillary, are these little blue star-shaped cells here, which we refer to as podocytes. Okay, so the glomerulus is fed by this vessel, the larger one coming in, that's my afferent arteriole, and it's drained by the smaller one that's leaving, that's my efferent arteriole. Now surrounding this glomerulus is this structure right there, which is referred to as Bowman's capsule or the glomerular capsule. The glomerular capsule and the glomerulus together are what we refer to as the renal corpuscle, which is why I called this the corpuscle model. Okay, so once the plasma is filtered through the podocytes of the glomerulus, it then enters into Bowman's capsule and we call that filtrate. Ultimately that filtrate will be turned into urine. So filtrate leaves Bowman's capsule through this tube here, which is your um, proximal convoluted tubule. Okay? Once I go down through the loop of Henle and continue through my nephron, the distal convoluted tubule is wrapping around the back. That's what this little structure here is supposed to be in cross section and then the cells that are found within the walls of the distal convoluted tubule are referred to as the macula densa cells. And that's about all we can find on that model. Once we go to the middle section of this model, we're looking at more of a lobule of a kidney. Okay? I have the cortex of the kidney, which is all the way on the outside, and then the closer we go down this way, the, the more we're looking towards the medulla. So each one of these little balls here, this is a larger section on your left-hand side as compared to the right. Each one of these larger balls is the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule together. So I'd refer to each one of those purple balls as the, glomer as the, um, the corpuscle. Okay? Coming off the renal corpuscle, I have the green proximal convoluted tubule. From there, I work my way down the descending limb of the loop of Henle. I go through the loop and I work my way back up the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. This isn't a great example right here because it doesn't look very twisty, but that's where your distal convoluted tubule would be. If I take a peek over at this one, I've got to your left, I've got the corpuscle, I've got the green proximal convoluted tubule, I go down the, ascent, the descending limb through the loop of Henle, up through the ascending limb, now I can see more of a distal convoluted tubule. My DCTs, distal convoluted tubules, all open up into this structure right there, which is my collecting duct. So you'll see the collecting duct has many branches that are, uh, that are kind of cut in cross-section where you can't see the distals attaching. My collecting duct is going to work its way all the way down through the pyramid of the kidneys, which that's what gives the pyramid its striated shape, and the collecting ducts all open up into the renal papilla. Okay? And the renal papilla then opens up into the uh, minor calyx and the urine drains from there. When I look at this kind of this blown up section here on the, on the right hand side, I see some blood vessels. The red vessel that's going horizontal, that's referred to as the arcuate artery, and then coming off the arcuate artery, working its way towards the cortex, is either the cortical radiate, or you'll also see it referred to as the interlobular. So once I work up my cortical radiate, you'll see all these vessels that give rise to the glomeruli. These are my afferent arterioles. And then you can just see where they're cut off a little bit. The efferent arterioles exit the other side of the, uh, of the glomerulus. I would then have my cortical radiate vein would be my blue one. Then I have my arcuate vein. And then from there I work my way more proximally. As I go all the way over to the left-hand side of this model, now I can see my kidney in cross-section. Okay? Or not cross-section, but coronal or frontal section. I can follow the vasculature. I've got my renal artery that comes in off the aorta. My renal artery then gives rise to the segmental, or what we call the lobar artery. If I follow that between the pyramids of the kidney, I have my interlobar artery. My interlobar gives rise to the arcuate. My arcuate gives rise to the cortical radiate. And then from there, I go into the nephron. As I come back out, I have my cortical radiate vein, my arcuate vein, my interlobular vein, and then my interlobular vein works its way all the way down into the renal vein. We don't have a segmental or a lobar vein associated with the kidney. When I look at the rest of my drainage pattern for urine, 
We already looked over at the nephron on the other side of the model. So ultimately, I go through uh, Bowman's capsule, proximal tubule, Lupa Henle, distal tubule, and then I open up into my collecting duct, and that's what this kind of yellowish structure is. So you can see the striated appearance of these triangular shaped regions. These triangles are referred to as my renal pyramids, and typically I have about six to eight of those per kidney. So the striated pattern that's made up of those, uh, uh, makes up those renal pyramids, the striations come from the collecting ducts. The collecting ducts ultimately open up into this little kind of round projection there that we call the renal papilla. And then you'll notice each of those papillae open up into a little receiving chamber. Each one of these little receptacles is referred to as a minor calyx. So you have a minor calyx per pyramid. And then if you notice down here on the bottom, I have a minor calyx here, a minor calyx there, and the two of them then are going to merge and give me what's called a major calyx. So typically we'll have only two or three major calyces per kidney. So I've got a minor, a minor, a minor, a minor, and then I would refer to this here as a major. Once I get my major calyces and they merge together, I'm into this area right there. And we refer to that area as the renal pelvis. And then the renal pelvis opens up into the ureter. The ureter goes to the bladder. And then from the bladder, we void out the urethra. Okay? And there's an overview of the, uh, the kidneys, the renal vasculature and the nephron associated with the kidney.